sent to Borco from all around the world. So this is his uh, lovely bed, which is uh, lovely, very comfy. I could nestle on there very nicely. Um, but, but look at all these things, all these toys. America, Germany, France, England, thank goodness. Uh, we're animal lovers, we hope there. Um, uh, Scotland, lots and lots of things for him, Look, even little huggies and things for his um, uh, disability. So um, there, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. There are people out there who care. So it's a strange situation. I must admit, when I heard the story of Borco, I kind of had an image of, of, you know, that part in Shrek where all the villagers are coming with their pitchforks and everything after the ogre. Um, and I thought, it can't be like that. But after speaking with our very handsome doctor, um, it, it does sound as if it is a little that way. It is a little to do with um, ignorance. And um, we're kind of at the top of a, 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 an iceberg, really. But let's hope we are moving forward and things will get done and people like our lovely doctor will make it happen and Borco, he, he has made a great uh, difference so if, if there's a good part to the story it's that what they did to him and his disability has brought it to the notice of everyone and clearly worldwide well I'm here with Dr George Litoff in his office um, it's Early on Thursday afternoon, uh, we're still doing lots of travelling, finding out lots of information. Um, Dr George, obviously your profession is to be a doctor, but I know that you spend an awful lot of time with another organisation that you've created, uh, all to do with the welfare of animals. Can you tell me about that? Absolutely, Wendy. It's the so-called uh, Plovdiv um, Animal Welfare uh, Society, and uh, it was... Um, registered in uh, 2006 and that, that's when I, I got actively involved in uh, animal welfare because there's so much need for that, that kind of activity in, in Bulgaria. So um, it's a small group of volunteers and so we've been trying in to help animals in various way, ways. I mean, it's obviously helping strays on the street, supporting them with food, water and some medical care. And we've been trying to um, to rescue and find homes for other strays, which is much more difficult, obviously, because we don't have that network of uh, foster care homes, and uh, it's very difficult to find a shelter for these animals before I, you, you find uh, someone to adopt them. I understand that you also get um, proactively involved in, in more the politics side of things. Exactly. We've been lobbying Parliament uh, for proper legislation, uh, especially before 2008, because we were pushing so hard, actually, for this Animal Welfare Act to, to, be, to, to, be, to, be, to be passed in Parliament. And uh, the funny thing is, it's, it's one thing we do, actually, and we only do it in Plovdiv. And you can see Georgi Serbezov, he's one of uh, my... Um, uh, brothers in arms to say and we've been actually challenging various acts of, of, of parliament in court actually quite successfully which is unbelievable you see because it's a it's a post-communist totalitarian country and uh, and people usually think no we can never um, uh, you can never find any justice in, in the Bulgarian court but but you can actually because these these, these are not political cases well we, we, we fight for, for 
proper and adequate legislation, basically, and quite often the judges agree with us. So we've been um, doing a lot of recommendation for uh, laws that haven't been passed yet, and later, if we see some inadequate laws, I mean, being passed, then, then we challenge them in court, so they have to sit again and then basically modify them later. I mean, those people in the Parliament. So it's, it, it's been so exciting because, as far as, as, far as I know, we are the pioneers in that particular field, uh, rescuing and finding homes for animals. Okay, everybody does it, you know. But challenging various acts of parliament, I'm talking laws, and I'm talking ordinances, uh, various regulations, you know, we challenge them. Even municipal regulations, we, we, uh, quite successfully, and most of the time successfully, we challenge them in court. So we want proper legislation because, as I said earlier to, to uh, Lorraine, I believe that uh, people do not respond very well to rational reasoning, and that's one of the reasons why slavery was aboli abolished. Not because people realized it was immoral and unethical, it was actually, but they didn't care because there were economic interests behind that. But because in 1833, I mean, they, they passed this, uh, this Slavery Ab Abolition Act, and that's how we, uh, that you need a system change first. Proper legislation, the lawmakers have to do it properly. And then, the behavior changes, I mean, and a few generations down, down the road, people don't even think whether it's legal or whether it's, I mean, ethical or moral, but they just take it for granted, and they don't do that kind of, kind of thing. The same I, thing I've actually with animal welfare. Actually, we know, I mean, cruel, cruel treatment of animal, animals is wrong, but if you don't back it up with proper laws, if you don't enforce these laws, how can things change? And that's how, when the behavior changes, then the mindset changes, then people... But, say, but oh, are you oh, seeing any, any progress... Not. Now not. or not? I mean, I, I've heard um, several times since I've been in Bulgaria this idea that people in Bulgaria see dogs as no better than vermin. Mm. How, how do you respond to that? I think it's some kind of... Um, it's been inherited from the past, actually. And I think uh, it's been because, mostly because uh, this attitude... Uh, because uh, Bulgaria... Um, was occupied in 1944 by the Russians. The, the Stalinist regime was actually basically uh, imposed on, on, Bo on Bulgaria. And it's, 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 it's a kind of Stalinist approach for, for solving problems, basically. Because, I mean, uh, 50 years, that, that's, that was the only way of solving economic, political, and social problems. I mean, by, by killing and by, by murder, basically. So it's, it's some kind of an inheritance we inherited from the not so distant past, actually. And that's the kind of a mindset that people have now. And, 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 and with no um, uh, active, uh, with not, and with no mechanism to enforce the existing, I mean, uh, legislation. So there's nothing to force these people to think otherwise. Education, none. There's nothing in schools. I mean, um, it, you don't see any educational programs in that respect, I mean, so to, to teach people in some kind of, some compassion and towards animals. You don't see that. And then, then you've got ignorance and so, and ignorance is like a hereditary disease when it goes, it goes in the family from one generation to the other. I mean, if, if the father is, is abusive and if, if he abuses animals in front of his children, they, how, how do these children, they don't know any better. So that, that's ignorance and that, that has to break. But the thing is, uh, it's, things are very stagnant in the moment. We've been trying very hard to change that mindset, and it, it hasn't been working, actually. The things, this Animal Welfare Act, it's, it's a decent act, and we fought so, so hard for, for that. But the thing is, uh, that our institutions, they, they, they don't care about this. I mean, they, they carry on, and, 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 and basically, for the last, it's been one of the most actively sabotaged acts, actually one of the most actively sabotaged laws in Bulgaria, that's the Animal Welfare Act, because uh, for the last 50 or 60 years, I mean, the, 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 the stray dogs and cats, they've been subjected to, to indiscriminate and, and mass slaughter, basically. It's still going on. Now, you, you say that. I'm going to bring up another point. I've got some figures written down here. Um, apparently, in Sofia, there are not many dogs on the streets now at all. Now, apparently, a couple of years ago, and various people and organizations uh, have given very different figures from 9,000 on the streets up to 200,000 on the streets, even at the most conservative figure of 9,000. Mm -hmm. Apparently now, most of the dogs have disappeared. Where have they gone? Well, that's a good question. That's what we've been asking, I mean, for the last five years. Because it's the, absolutely the same situation in Plovdiv. Now, we used to monitor the figures. Uh, we used to monitor the, the number of dogs being euthanized and, having, and saying euthanized. I mean, Bulgarian 
euthanasia is not what <laughs> is something quite different uh, basically you describe that to me oh it's a horrible thing basically because we we've had wit witnesses who by accident witness i mean how dogs are, are brutally i mean slaughtered actually in in the that horrible place called called isolator now they call them shelters it has nothing to do with care for animals anyway so we we used to monitor but no, so you have to be more specific well, how do you mean they kill them oh with uh, with uh, with sticks they used to kill them well what what the witnesses said and it, it, there's, there's a small portion uh, basically there's a small video clip which is in the internet so i can i can post the link to you and the witnesses they describe because they went inside looking for a dog stray dog that got lost basically probably picked from these uh, the, uh, these men uh, the animal control uh, people, and they went looking for the, for the dog, actually. It was maybe 8.30 in the morning, so th they were not expected then. And um, uh, there was three of them, two boys and a girl, and the girl went inside to check the, these cells to see if the dog is alive and, and available. And then the, the two boys, they heard some, some screaming coming from one of the garages, and, and they, they, they looked through the window, there's a small window there, and they were horrified actually they saw a pile of bodies and half the, half most of the dogs were dead and the other the, the other few dogs were actually struggling for their life can you imagine and there were two dog handlers inside and they were holding these they were holding oh, they had these um, you know how they kill them basically is, is catch them with this uh, hook with the left hand and with the right hand uh, blow them you know repeatedly on the yeah. head in the head until they're dead, and uh, that's a horrible thing. And I, I'm sure there are various different ways, actually, of killing dogs in these facilities. It just it so happened that we only have these... these uh, uh, so, sorry, do you think there's been a concerted campaign to, to get these dogs off the street, and that's why they're just oh, not there anymore? Oh, absolutely. It's been orchestrated. I mean, this, this kind of activity cannot go, I mean, uh, unpunished for a long time, I and mean, without the... Uh, if it's not tolerated basically by by the municipal um, authorities because obviously they know what's, what's been happening now the thing is nobody wants wants these dogs on the streets but the thing is uh, what it says in the animal welfare act is that we're supposed to they're supposed to trap new and return these dogs so well basically uh, uh, returning these dogs is essential part of this program I mean, if you trap and neuter these dogs and kill them later, it's just, just wasted money. What's the point of doing that? the whole thing of catching and transporting them, accommodating them, and then killing them in the end? So, and it's illegal at the end of the day, not mentioning the, the ethical side. But the thing is, we've been hearing these, uh, these um, we've been hearing this, uh, and the media, obviously, I mean, uh, accusing us, the animal welfare activists, that we want these dogs on the streets. It's not us. It's, it's not us. We, it's... It's it's the it's the lawmakers who who actually wrote this uh, this this down and and it's a law now, so it, it's uh, it has to be done. It's obligatory, so it's not for me to say what has to be done. It's written down very clearly, so they just have to do it. Otherwise, it's illegal activity. But they don't care. I mean, they they, they just, we we hear these comments on on the media all the time. Okay, why are these dogs let on the streets? Because the lawmakers decided that that's the way, that's the ethical way to. That's, it should be done because if you castrate, if you neuter all the dogs in, in, in this city, for instance, I mean, there will be no more dogs coming. And if you, and if you educate those people not to, to throw their animal companions out on the street or, or neuter them and not let them out wandering on, wandering on the street, so there will be no new, new dogs. And, if, and you, obviously, if you, if, you, if you do all these things, which are very basic and simple things, and there's so much money you wasted on a yearly basis, I mean, uh, things would have, would, would have been different. But the thing is, we used to monitor this facility before 2008, and they would actually kill maybe 3,000 dogs in Plovdiv every year. And that, that figure is constant, 2003, 4, 5, 6. It's a constant figure, which means if you kill 3,000 dogs, that's Plovdiv and the surrounding villages, obviously uh, you get another 3,000 next year. Now, in 2008, they started trapping, neutering, and returning, on paper at least, and they claimed that they neuter maybe four, seven hundred dogs every year, and it's been going for, for five years, so seven, that's another three and a half thousand dogs neutered. We should have them on the streets now in Plovdi, and we should have maybe another seven, eight thousand who are not neutered yet. They're part of the program, but they haven't been manipulated yet. And, and we, should, we should basically have some, maybe around 10,000 dogs on the streets of Plovdiv. And in fact... And how many are there? Maybe 200. Wow. So where, where are the dogs, actually?
because millions have been wasted, millions of money, like taxpayers' I, money. Is anyone investigating this? No, no. Uh, we, 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 me and Georgie, we wrote numerous um, petitions to the public prosecutor in Plovdiv for crimes, for criminal activity, because embezzling money is a criminal activity. We know they forge documents because they kill dogs. We know that they do it. We can't see it because it's done behind closed doors, you see, but we have circumstantial evidence because we go in there and, some, and there is a, this um, access to information law in Bulgaria which uh, gives us certain rights, basically, well, as citizens. We can ask for information. And amazing thing, actually, 2008, but that's before they, they, before they started forging these documents because now there is nothing on paper just to cover their asses, you see. They're very careful now and they've, they've sort of mutated They've mutated like, like viruses, you see, these people, just to continue with the killings, but not being caught. So, you see, we, we, we went in there, inside, on the 27th of May, uh, 2008, and they were supposed to, to, to trap, neuter, and return dogs. And we counted 2,007 registered animals who were actually caught. That's for, let's say, uh, from 4th of February to, to 27th of May. That's basically uh, four months. And we counted... 165 euthanized dogs. That's, that, that's, that, that's, that's a horrible thing. That's 80% of the dogs were killed. Why? Because they were aggressive. And, and the law is very specific on that. Now, in order to, to euthanize a dog, the dog should, be, um, uh, should have an incurable, incurable disease first. Then, uh, this, the, the, this, the, I mean, this, it should be a terminal, term, the dog should be in a terminal state. And third, it should be in unbearable pain and suffering. So you need all these three things to, 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 for, for euthanasia to be legal. If the dog is sick, okay. If the dog is aggressive, you know, there is a, uh, there's a commission. And uh, there must be a, a rec and that's according to the Animal Welfare Act. They always need, they, they, do, they assess the temperament of the dog. And it's the, the head of the show, the head of the, the isolator, and it's one of the doctors, and it's a representative of a non-governmental organization like ours. So they have to phone us, and one of us will have to, will have to go there and participate in that assessment. It's never been done, actually. They do these protocols without the signature of the third person, and that's the third person, according to the Animal Welfare Act. That's a representative of a non-governmental organization who, who deals with animal welfare. It's never been done. So they kill 165 dogs, according to them, and them only, they were aggressive, and, and that's a horrible thing. And we started writing complaints, I mean, because that's... Uh, now, we went to one of these, that I know they used to be called Isolator um, right. Place. It was at uh, Seslafsi uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, going on what we saw there, and what they said, and the nutrient program in place, etc., etc., you couldn't fail to think well, okay, you're doing something about it now. You've got a system, seems to be working okay. Mm -hmm. Good on you. What do you say to that? I'll say that uh, what is essential is invisible. Uh, when the end, uh, you, you don't see, you don't see the... Um, uh, what, didn't, what didn't we see that you think we should have done? Well you, well, you don't see it. I mean, you can't see it because, I mean, they won't let you in if they're doing something wrong, actually, at the moment. They won't. But what, what do you think they, they're doing? We're killing dogs. Mm. And, and, and mistreating dogs in such a way, basically, some of the dog dies because of these surgical manipulations. I, I, I can't even say that it's not even, um, it's not neutering. I mean, I mean, I can only speculate whether they do it on purpose or simply because they don't know how to neuter a dog. But I mean, they do some surgical manipulations, they let the dogs on the street, two days, three days later they die uh, slow, slowly and painfully, actually, from the complications of that surgery. And that's not job properly done. Right? That's not why we, we pay money. I mean, the taxpayers, I mean. Uh, what is essential is not visible. So we, and uh, other, other, other dogs simply die from starvation, you see. Uh, it, 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 does, it does sort of strike me in this whole thing that somebody needs to do an undercover investigation because oh, yes. there's no hard evidence, is there? Do you say it's invisible? And, and we don't have the potential. We don't have the potential and these people are very careful, very crafty and they and they uh, actually, they've had the same people for the last maybe 15 years actually in the, that isolated. So they won't let anyone outside go in, go in there and start even, and that's because they probably suspect that we may try and infiltrate them. 
with an outsider. Look, this is, this is something we, in 2008, we asked some information, that's, that's 11th of the 12th, 2008, and we wanted, now, th these are some of the diagnoses, why? Because they say that, well, they... What, what is this you're showing me? Th this, is, this is a list, the number, these, this is a list of, 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 of dogs who actually died in the shelter which is supposed to, and they have four doctors there who are supposed to care for these animals and treat them. Just to bring it up to date though, that the doc, Dr. Nakoff, who's come in about a year ago, obviously we're going back several years on this. I know that he only started there a year ago. Now according to him, you know, he's turning it round and putting all these things in place and it is quite a different strategy. You still not happy with that? I'm not happy with anything. Because how, how do you explain that? Uh, a reason for a dog to die is cannibalism. So it's written down. Now, for, for that to happen, no, no. But this is 2008. Yeah, but the, the Animal Welfare Act was, was, was uh, enforced in, uh, in January 2008. Are you not yes, happy yeah, that, that, yeah, that yeah, yes, do you later. think things have changed now, though, or well, not? Uh, well, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know because we've given up, you know. We, we don't, I, I don't even like to go in there now because I only see a few cases, a few cages, and I see a few dogs inside, but I don't see the rest what's, what is essential. Bec I don't see why dogs are not on the streets. We don't see any dogs on the streets, so we don't know why. We can only suspect, but, but we can't prove it. And, say, and, and during the last five years, we've written, we've written three, 13, I think we have 13 petitions to, to the public prosecutor to, to go and investigate uh, this criminal activity, because uh, to, to kill a dog, you have to cover, it, cover your tracks, basically. And do, they do all sorts of, uh, you know, um, um, they manipulate documents, they forge documents just to cover it up, you see, basically. And they've been, they've been very, they mutated. But the thing is, nothing has been done, actually. I, mean, I, I, I think this story, yeah, I think this story is going to run and run, mm -hmm. uh, obviously for quite some time. So, um, as I say, probably until there's, there's hard proof uh, and really thorough investigation, which we said is extremely difficult to do. So I know it's going to run and run, but we're going to keep in touch with you. Fine, but the proof is out there. It's on the street. We don't have the dogs on the street. I mean, you can see it. Yeah, but you it. have to have the proof of where they've gone. Well, exactly. I'm not investigator, basically. That's, that's why we have the, the public prosecutor. That's why we have the police, you see. Well, this is obviously such an emotive, uh, very important and strong story, and I think it's one of those that's destined to run and run. I do think we need a strong investigative reporter in there to find out what's really going on. But uh, in the meantime, keep in touch, and thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Wendy.